the Sports Vote Campaign Podcast. Invest in sports. Sunday, November 15th, 2020. California is the leading edge of the American dream. The problem with that is that we've oversold it everywhere else for way too long. And that is the source of the trouble in our politics. As Jeffrey Hazlitt says, a brand is a promise delivered, and the American dream is not being delivered according to the promise. So we're working on the Nation Builder site. This is a full-featured political uh, campaign and issue advocacy website, including electoral maps and tools, uh, contact information for state representatives. Um, I'm going through all of that stuff piece by piece. What we're doing is we're building economic models for each state, and that will be part of the library of uh, tools and things you can use to send to local elected representatives. The idea here being that we will create what we're calling the Sports Vote Electoral College. This is still a national effort, national federal regulation, but we're going to use the state level ground game to get the local politicians interested and to offer up sports investing as an alternative to sports gambling, basically grassroots lobbying effort through this uh, platform. So if you're interested in getting in on the ground floor, please go into that site and claim your profile. doesn't cost anything. There's no charge. Um, this is a, a, a tool that we're paying for on our side. So it's allsportsmarket.nationbuilder.com. Again, allsportsmarket.nationbuilder.com. And we will be building this out over the coming weeks. You will continue to see things added to it to uh, build what we're calling the Sports Vote Electoral College. So on uh, Trumpism, i just like to make a comment here that may surprise some of you. I think if the Biden-Harris administration is serious about uh, taking this on and, and lowering the temperature, that they should consider putting someone from uh, the Trump administration in the cabinet, even Trump himself which I know they would never do that. But if they really want to deal with these matters on the face, that's the right way to do it. Uh, but I would be very surprised. You may see Mitt Romney. I think he's about as far as anybody could go. But uh, even that would be a step in the right direction. So as I said, uh, DraftKings has lost even more money at an even faster rate uh, than they did before. Go to the Associated Press story. Uh, it's 98 cents a share. That's their loss. Okay, that's that's the loss. It's um, about 50% more than it was projected to be. That's the third earnings loss miss in a row by the quote-unquote analysts. Um, you can see it for yourself. Just go to the Yahoo Finance page every, every quarter. The uh, loss not only increases, but it increases at a faster rate. So basically, uh, the more customers you get, the more money you lose. So I fail to understand how that ever turns into a strategy for profitability when uh, nothing is happening but losses at a faster rate. So the more customers you add, the more money you lose at a faster rate. And that is exactly what has been borne out uh, in the numbers. So if I'm somehow uh, off base here, feel free to send uh, alternate facts to support at allsportsmarket.com. Support at allsportsmarket.com. So uh, the loss is about $3 million a day. Uh, that's It's astounding that that can somehow be spun into a positive story. Uh, $3 million a day, um, more than $300 million in three months. So anyway, okay. Uh, I would ask the question, is DraftKings in 104 countries? Uh, are you in 104 countries? I don't think so. We are. Um, and then finally... Thank you to the New York Times for the uh, headline relating to the Trump administration missing out on a, a political opportunity using sports. Uh, we plan to capitalize on that. The uh, trumpsports.org website, news website, is now about 10,000 searchable stories uh, feeding into the search engines every day. So we have a theory about the uh, UK being held back economically because of their embrace of legalized sports gambling. More to come on that. Um, Alper's been working on this behind the scenes. And then I hope that the new Biden-Harris administration, unlike the current administration, actually believes in the rule of law 
and that the Wire Act from 1961 is actually enforced as it should be, and the march of this sports gambling garbage is put to rest. Uh, the 1961 Wire Act is in effect, and uh, this is an opportunity to actually show the world that we follow the laws instead of break the laws. So interesting to see what happens in the few in the in the coming months, opening months of this administration. So Jack Ma um, apparently stuck his finger in the tiger's eye. Um, you know, I don't know all of the details of this, but what I've been able to find out is that the Chinese government isn't too interested in promoting the reckless kind of financial dealings that Jack Ma is promoting through his new IPO. So we know that China has a very strong anti-gambling policy because that's what we've been arguing in their courts um, with, with the sports risk index and the all sports market platform to prove that it's not. And it appears to me that this is connected not directly to gambling, but in their way of viewing the financial system. It is, uh, you know, predatory lending causing uh, breaks in the financial system, predatory lenders basically hurting the citizens and, and causing losses. So uh, more to come on that for sure. But talk about really screwing up uh, the biggest IPO, I think, ever, uh, or if not ever, in the top few. So uh, interesting, I think, an insight. Why do people have such trepidation about uh, other people in powerful roles? I've actually thought about this for a very long time, and my conclusion is that um, we only know the world through our own experience, and it's very hard to step, step outside of your own experience. My theory on this is that uh, people think that others will do what they would do. So uh, it's an interesting psychology. So if someone is afraid of power, that to me has shown you should probably be afraid of them if they get power, because they're thinking in terms of what would I do if I had it. So uh, I want to have uh, any example sent to me. I want one single example anywhere, okay, anywhere in the world, anywhere where a gambling lobbyist or gambling faction successfully lobbied for the legalization of gambling according to a set of facts and figures, basically convinced the state budget or whatever government entity that it was a good idea, and then actually delivered on that promise according to the numbers that they said they were going to, and that on top of that, how did the society fare in terms of divorces, bankruptcies, and crime? Because that part's never talked about. So you can leave that part out. Just send me the, that's publicly reported, but if you have a study where sports gambling was enabled somewhere according to a plan and according to a set of facts and figures, and that turned out to be true, and it worked out, and everybody's happy with it, please send it. Support at allsportsmarket.com. I would love to see it, because I have yet to see one in my entire life. Okay, so um, China congratulating Biden. For anyone who is thinking anything is going to come out of all of this ridiculous wrangling in the courts by uh, Rudy Giuliani, which all these cases are failing, just do your own research. Um, that's it. China says, congratulations, biggest trading partner in the world. That's it. So any other thinking of, of some kind of reversal that would be absolutely destructive to the republic and democracy on the, on the world stage uh, is out of reach. So uh, DraftKings lies, unemployment lies. So it seems to me that the current uh, condition of things is to make up or distort things by 50% or depending on how you look at it, 100%, double or half across the board, misreporting unemployment rates, DraftKings misreporting their earnings. And my theory about that is that uh, you have to have about that magnitude of a change being double or half before the public will wake up to it. Think 50% uh, off sales, think double or nothing. You know, it, the psychology is pretty settled that that's about where the public starts to pay attention, like really capture their attention. So uh, my my theory is that that's, it's all sinister. It's, it's intentional. It's sinister because you can get their attention with that level of misreporting. And that's 
enough of a distortion to basically screw them over. <laughs> Bottom line. All right. So uh, the Sports Vote campaign store initial shipments. I know I pushed this a few times because I'm still accumulating these orders uh, as they come in. I'm going to wait until um, after uh, good, um, not Good Friday, uh, Black Friday, because we will have some things uh, in there for that. So I'm going to tally everything up on the 30th, which is the last day of this month, Monday the 30th, and uh, and that will be the shipping schedule from there. And everybody who has orders going back, it's about six or seven weeks, I think, right now, will get an update with uh, shipping dates on everything that's been ordered. So uh, thank you for your time. Again, it looks like the pandemic is really headed uh, back into a bad situation. I would not be surprised if football locks down. Um, it's The numbers are really, really bad. So uh, please stay safe with your family. I know this is tiring. I'm certainly tired of it. Everybody I know is tired of it, but uh, the threat is still very much alive. So um, once again, thank you for your time, and I will report again uh, next Sunday. Bye now.